Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. I got an email from Glinda W, subject line Cleansing of America. And in the email, Dear Jared, first of all, thank you for all your research and efforts with your spreadsheets. I listen to your channel regularly. A lot of work on your part. Secondly, I hope you're able to read this email. I am not one who usually sends mail or replies and comments, but I feel so strongly that you need to do further research into the subject of the cleansing of America. The following is from Ezra Taft Benson, October 1980, and then she puts a quote, which we're going to go to the church website to read that, and uh, we're going to read more of this uh, talk that she's referring to. And then she says, The whole talk is worth reading slash, slash listening to Ezra Taft Benson, Prepare for the Days of Tribulation, October 1980. We are usually given decades of warning before events because the Lord is merciful to those who listen and heed the words of his messengers and as a testimony of warning. Please do more research and you'll you will be surprised what the Lord will put before you in the way of information. I do so hope you're able to get to this email. <clears throat> I feel it is very important for you to understand this information. Perhaps you might be, even be able to let me know that you have received this information. Very sincerely, Glenda Wagner. And uh, yes, yes, whenever I get an email from somebody and I do a video, I'll uh, send an email to confirm that I got it and to give you a heads up that I'm going to publish the video. And I apologize to anybody whose email I can't get to, but I receive thousands of emails. It's really hard. There's never going to be a time when I can get to every email. It just, it's physically not possible. So please never take it personally if I don't get your get to your email. Yeah, so I am going to continue to study this. <clears throat> the idea, it seems, is that there's some people that believe that there has to be some kind of uh, cleansing or destruction of the United States before the second coming can happen. And therefore, we know that the second coming isn't close because all this has to happen. And so far, I don't agree with that. Um, on the one hand, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because the entire world, all of planet Earth is going to be cleansed at the second coming. The The wicked are going to be destroyed. They're going to be burned with fire. So I don't really know what the purpose would be of an American-specific cleansing when you're going to have a worldwide cleansing. Um, <clears throat> now, what I'm looking for is something that says that, yes, this absolutely has to happen rather than the scriptures that say that something like this may happen. Because we know that uh, America is a promised land. It's reserved for the righteous. We have all, we have all sorts of warnings in the Book of Mormon about that. <clears throat> but it all seems to be conditional. And it doesn't seem that it's certain that it's going to happen. Or, or even to what extent? Is it the entire United States that has to be destroyed, punished, um, in order for this land to be preserved for the, the righteous. So what I'm trying to get to is there's something that clearly says that this has to happen because that's an idea that keeps getting promoted. And I, I don't think that it's right. Now, I have already uh, gone through two prophecies or supposed prophecies that talk about future destruction. One is the one that's recorded in Wilford Woodruff's journal. I guess he worked in the church historian's office and he came across uh, this supposed prophecy, <clears throat> but it's anonymous and we don't know who wrote it. In uh, the journal, he, leave, he leaves a blank because he doesn't know who the author is of this vision. There have been people that have said that it was John Taylor because it mentions the fact that the author was reading in French and John Taylor knew French. And then there were other people that said that it was Joseph F. Smith, and he said no. Not only was it not him, but that it's a false prophecy in general. Regardless of who wrote it, the author is unknown, but it's a false prophecy. So Joseph F. Smith, who was president of the church, he said that. And then later, Joseph Fielding Smith confirmed that it was a false prophecy because it just continued on, it, it, and it continues on till this day. There's still people that believe that it's a it's a true prophecy, but it's not. And then there's the other one, the yellow dog prophecy that seems to have originally been a prophecy about Jackson County specifically in reference to the Civil War and the destruction that would come as a result of the Civil War. But this has gone on 
to survive to our our day. I think it's easy to remember because it's yellow dog. That's like a, you know, it puts a certain image in your head and it's just easy to remember. And the church has tried to squash it. They did an Ensign article uh, about three Missouri myths, and that's one of them. So I have these two that were specific that something was supposed to happen. The only problem is, is that they're false prophecies or uh, in this case, it's a prophecy that has happened and, it, and it's it's not going to happen again. It's not f- like for the future. It happened with the Civil War. So I have this spreadsheet called Quotes, False Prophecies and Visions, and I, I may or may not be adding on to this. It just depends on what I come across. So before we get into the talk that Glenda sent, um, let me give you the update on the Flood the Earth Challenge. I'm sorry that I haven't updated this for a while. It's... I realize what I need to do is I need to just update it little by little. <clears throat> I'll like do a search for flood and then update the entire thing, like everybody that I come across. <clears throat> but I need to do just like a few at a time and then it'll be more manageable. Okay, so we're at 9,726 copies of the Book of Mormon that have been shared so far. We're trying to get to 10,000. And once we do that, I'm going to do like a special live stream and we'll celebrate. Uh, we had another goal that we've already hit. We were trying to get to 1,000 people that have participated in the cha- the challenge. And as you can see, we're at 1,114. So now we're trying to get to 5,000 people that have joined. So if you haven't already, please uh, think about sharing the Book of Mormon and then letting me know. Just let me know in the comments or send me an email. Make sure to include hashtag flood, and then I'll update the tracker, and I'll send you a confirmation uh, to your email or to your comment, Okay. Okay, so keep up the good work, everybody, and uh, let's just get to it. So this is the October 1980 General Conference. The name of the talk is Prepare for the Days of Tribulation by President Ezra Taft Benson, at the time President of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. So I've highlighted some other things because I did decide to read the whole talk like Glenda suggested, and uh, let me just show you what I found, including the part that she had in her email. Okay, for over 40 years, in the spirit of love, members of the church have been counseled to be uh, thrifty and self-reliant, to avoid debt, pay tithes, and a generous fast offering, be industrious, and have sufficient food, clothing, and fuel on hand uh, to last at least one year. Okay, let me highlight that. At least one year. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. Today... There are compelling reasons to reemphasize this council. We heard it done we heard it done effectively in that great welfare meeting this morning. May I add just a word? Members of the church are feeling the economic pinch of higher taxes and inflation coupled with conditions of continuing recession. Some have come to their bishops seeking assistance to pay for house payments, car loans, and utilities. Unfortunately, there has been fostered in the minds of some in expectation that when we experience hard times, when we have when we have been unwise and extravagant with our resources and have lived beyond our means, we should look to either the church or government to bail us out. Uh, forgotten by some of our members is an underlying principle of the church welfare plan that, quote, no true Latter-day Saint will while physically able, voluntarily shift from himself the burden of his own support, end quote. That's from Marion G. Romney in the October 1973 General Conference. Okay, so here we're talking about um, preparing for hard times. You know, in this case, he's talking about the current uh, situation in the country, the economic pinch of higher taxes and inflation, Oh, which we're going through right now. There's inflation going on right now. And uh, since 1980, there's been, there have been issues with the economy. There have been good times, but there have been bad times. You know, we had the the so-called Great Recession, which I think it was like, uh, like in 2008 and 2009, right? And I'd like to know from you, um, put it in the comments below, please, if... By taking this counsel, you've been able to weather those storms. Has there been a time, has there been a time that you have had to tap into food storage or, you know, you had savings because you were following this counsel? Because 
I feel like sometimes when we read talks like this, like we see the title of the talk, Prepare for the Days of Tribulation, we're always thinking of the future. We're always, always thinking of apocalyptic scenes that haven't happened yet. And that could be true. It could be true. <clears throat> but I wonder if some of us have already benefited from this council and the council was given for things that we've already gone through. Um, and we'll probably continue to go through, but <clears throat> anyway, let's uh, continue on. But Put it in the comments below if you've tapped into your food storage before and if it's helped you. Um, toward the middle of the talk, he says, The revelation to produce and store food may be as essential to our temporal we welfare today as boarding the ark was to the people in the days of Noah. Okay, so that sounds a little bit scary. But again, I ask you, have you already done this? Uh, were you sustained because of your food storage or your savings or your emergency su supplies already? <clears throat> he later talks about his experience in Europe as a result of World War II, I think is what he was talking about. He says, I've seen hunger stalk the streets of Europe. Okay, so uh, that's something that other parts of the world have gone through. Um, in a pretty dramatic way. And then toward the end of the talk, um, yeah, I pretty much have this part, this like last part of the talk all highlighted. And this uh, contains the quote that Glenda was sharing in the email. All right, he says, too often we bask in our comfortable complacency and rationalize that the ravages of war, economic disaster, famine, and earthquake cannot happen here. Those who believe this are either not acquainted with the revelations of the Lord, or they do not believe them. Those who smugly think that these calamities will not happen, that they somehow will be set aside because of the righteousness of the saints, are deceived and will rue the day they harbored such a delusion. The Lord has warned and forewarned us against a day of great tribulation, and given us counsel through his servants on how we might be prepared for these difficult times. Have we heeded his counsel? I bear you my testimony that President Heber J. Heber J. Grant was inspired of the Lord in establishing the church welfare program. The first presidency was inspired uh, when they made the first public announcement in 1936 and declared the prime purpose of church welfare was, quote, to help the people help themselves. In conference report, October 1936. I bear witness to... to I bear witness to that inspired counsel from 1936 to the present day that the saints lay up a year's supply of food. Okay. When President Spencer W. Kimball persistently um, admonishes the members to plant gardens and fruit trees and produce our own food, he is likewise inspired of the Lord. Be faithful, my brothers and sisters, to this counsel, and you'll be blessed. Yes, the most blessed people in all the earth. You are good people, I know that, but all of us need to be better than we are. Let us be in a position so we are, we are able not only to feed ourselves through the home production and storage, uh, but others as well. May God bless us to be prepared for the days which lie ahead, which may be the most severe yet. All right, so he said this in 1980, and there have been lots of disasters uh, all throughout the world. Now, I didn't see anything in here that was specifically talking about the United States. So if we're talking about the cleansing of America, I, I didn't read it here. Remember, <clears throat> in 1980, the church was a global church. It, it was found throughout the world, not as much as now, but 1980, we did have temples throughout the world. Um, and there was a global membership of the church. I think another problem that I see sometimes is like when we, when we read things like this, we think that they're talking specifically to us in the United States. It's for us and not just the United States, but for our time. Like it couldn't have applied to anything uh, between now and 1980. It has to be for us and it has to be for the future and we need to prepare for it. And I would pre prepare for it. I would. <clears throat> That's one of the reasons why I live in Kansas right now. When we lived in Arizona, um, I just felt these different promptings that we should 
um, purchase land and have a homestead. That's why my channel is called Christian Homestead. Uh, in the beginning of the channel, I didn't know exactly how the channel was going to go. I was going to have more, or and I did have more like homesteading type videos, but now it's just what you see today. Um, and uh, probably in about a year, we're planning on moving to Missouri, uh, somewhere near Kansas City. I'd rather not live in the metro area because I like living in a small town and even more ideal, I'd like to live in the country. So I don't know how things are going to go, but I'm, I, I would like to continue to homestead or at least be able to have a garden and maybe some chickens at the very least. Here we've had cows and that's been uh, fun and fulfilling and good. But so I'm all about it. I don't want anyone to think that I'm not, uh, that I'm against preparing for the future. I absolutely think that all of us should. But what we're talking about here is the cleansing of America. And so I think there's a lot of really good advice here. There's a lot of warning, uh, especially this last part uh, where he says, which may be the most severe yet. So that's kind of that's kind of scary. But we think about the different wars that have taken place since 1980. We think about, again, I always point to the Ukraine uh, war that's going on. We have members of the church that live in Ukraine in Russia, and this advice would have equally um, been valid for us as well as them and what they're currently going through. We've seen lots of hurricanes and earthquakes, um, both in the United States and throughout the world. We've experienced inflation and recessions here in the United States since 1980. And again, if you benefited from your food storage or savings during these times or, or through some natural disaster, please let me know in the description box below. Uh, recently this year, there's been this big tornado outbreak and there were a number of towns that were destroyed. Uh, small towns, but there were at least, there's at least like, I think at least two or three that I can think of that were destroyed in this tornado outbreak this year. I might have to look into that and, and maybe put together a new spreadsheet of like a list of towns that have been de destroyed by tornadoes. So anyway, um, I can't, I can't put this on my spreadsheet. Um, I, what I'm, what I'm going to do is whatever I find for the cleansing of America, if I find like some statement that that's in the affirmative that yes, America has to be cleansed before the second coming. I'll put it on my spreadsheet called quotes A through Z under cleansing of America. But I haven't found that yet. I haven't. Um, this is just really good advice. Now, I had a few more things to say. So here in 1980, they were talking about doing a year's worth of uh, food storage and supplies. Um, it seems that that's changed. And I think it's inspired Maybe back then that was a good idea. <clears throat> Maybe more revelation has been received. But this is the current guidance. So if we go to the uh, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, general handbook for the church under chapter 38, uh, section or whatever, 8.15, uh, it says extreme preparation or survivalism. The church encourages self-reliance. Members are encouraged to be spiritually and physically prepared for life's challenges. However, church leaders have counseled against extreme or excessive preparation for possible catastrophic events. Such efforts are sometimes called survivalism. Efforts to prepare should be motivated by faith, not fear. And this is a big problem that I see in um, just kind of like this crowd that like really holds on to these, I, it's like, and I'm not, Glenda, I'm not saying that it's you. I'm not. But I've seen like comments and I've gotten emails and stuff where I, I, I get the sense that there's people that almost like romanticize this idea that the United States has to be destroyed and that you're going to have to depend on your own um, strength, you know, and wits to survive what's coming. <clears throat> I, I, I don't, I don't really understand it. I, ha I have some ideas and some thoughts on it, but I'm going to go with what the church says, and I'm going to go with faith, not fear. So if you're preparing, it doesn't mean that you're, like, hopefully you're not doing it out of fear. You're doing it out of faith. Like, oh, this is 
uh, good advice that we're receiving from church leadership. The Lord is inspiring this, but it's not because I'm afraid or I feel like I need to rely on my own flesh, my own strength. Anyway, continuing, church leaders have counseled members not to go into debt to establish food storage. Instead, members should establish a home storage supply in a financial reserve over time. And then it says, uh, see food storage under topics and questions on the church website. So when you do that, uh, there's a section called, how much food storage do I need? And it says, take the amount of food you would need to purchase to feed your family for a day and multiply that by seven. That is how much food you would need for a one-week supply. Once you have a week supply, you can gradually expand it to a month and eventually three months. For longer-term needs, and where permitted, gradually build a a supply of food that will last a long time and that you can use to stay alive, such as wheat, rice, and beans. A portion of these items may be rotated in your three-month supply. So, Now it seems like the guidance is try and get to three months at least. And then if you can do more, then that's great. But, you know, shoot for like three months as like a bare minimum. But it doesn't say anything here now about making sure that you have a year's worth. So I, cause I don't know, a year's, a year's worth is kind of like, it it puts in your mind the thought like, oh my gosh, is there going to be a nuclear holocaust? Is there going to be, you know, these like roaming bands of thieves, you know, going throughout the country and you're going to have like really hunker down, make sure you have your ammo because it's going to be at least a year. So I don't know if that if that's why there's been the change. I don't know. I feel like a year is probably overkill, but I guess it depends on what the disaster is. But the church right now is saying, uh, try to get to three months. And then if you can do more then then great. Okay. And then the last thing I wanted to share is, um, there's just like, there's so much fear about the future uh, in this second coming community, this like LDS second coming community. And I don't think that that should be. I think that we should be wise, uh, that we shouldn't be naive, but I don't think that we should have this spirit of fear. And I think that not just based on what I personally believe, but I, I believe that because of what church leadership has been telling us. So let me show you a few things. We're going to look at my quotes A through Z spreadsheet for future is bright. And then my common misconceptions spreadsheet for the misconception. I should, I should fear the events leading up to the second coming. And then back to my quotes A through Z under the topic alarmism. So let's see if we can find a disconnect behind the way that we look at the second coming and what we hear other people say and what church leadership actually says. Prophets and apostles that are called to guide the church, that are inspired, that personally know the one who sends down these judgments and who knows what the plan is in the lead up to the second coming. So <clears throat> this is President Henry B. Eyring, first counselor in the first presidency, uh, the October 2017 General Conference, Fear Not to Do Good. He says, the best days are ahead for the kingdom of God on the earth. Okay, President Nelson, uh, this is in an Ensign article uh, that he wrote called The Future of the Church, Preparing the World for the Savior's Second Coming. Meanwhile, here and now, we live in a time of turmoil. Earthquakes and tsunamis wreak devastation, governments collapse, economic stresses are severe, the family is under attack, and divorce rates are rising. We have great cause for concern, but we need not let our fears displace our faith. We can combat those fears by strengthening our faith. Why do we need such resilient faith? Because difficult days are ahead. Rarely in the future will it be easy or popular to be faithful Latter-day, to be a faithful Latter-day Saint. Each of us will be tested. The Apostle Paul warned that in the latter days, those who diligent, diligently follow the Lord shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3.12 That very persecution can either crush you into silent weakness or motivate you to be more exemplary and courageous in your daily lives. I promise you that as you follow Jesus Christ, you will find find sustained peace and true joy. 
as you keep your covenants with increasing precision, and as you defend the church and kingdom of God on the earth today, the Lord will bless you with strength and wisdom to accomplish what only members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints can accomplish. Okay, this is the president of the church. And it sounds like he's more concerned about persecution. That yes, there's going to be economic stress and uh, natural disasters, yes, but we do not need to let our fears displace our faith. And to focus on staying true to the gospel and to Christ, bearing your testimony, remaining separate from the world, even though you're going to feel more isolated because they're going more that way and you're staying where you're at. Okay. Um, oh, this is actually, I think, on my misconception spreadsheet. So we'll skip that. Uh, President Nelson again, October 2020 General Conference, A New Normal. He says, throughout the proceedings, I have pictured you in my mind listening to conference. I've asked the Lord to help me understand what you are feeling, worrying about, or trying to resolve. I've wondered what I might say to conclude this conference that would send you forth with the optimism about the future that I know the Lord wants you to feel. Okay, so you guys, let's look inside of ourselves. Are we optimistic about the future like the Lord wants us to feel, or... Are we afraid? And, you know, listening to people that promote doom and gloom. Because there are people that do that. And maybe their intentions are good, but it's not right. And that's not to say that bad things aren't going to happen. But President Nelson, the prophet, is saying that the Lord wants us to feel optimistic about the future. So are we experiencing a disconnect between what the prophet and what the Lord wants you to feel and what you yourself are telling yourself about the future or others. Avoid disconnects. Continuing, we live in a glorious age foreseen by prophets for centuries. This is the dispensation when no spiritual blessing will be withheld from the righteous. Despite the world's commotion, the Lord would have us look forward to the future with joyful anticipation. So this is the attitude that we should have. President Nelson, again, embrace the future with faith, October 2020 General Conference. My dear sisters, we have so much to look forward to. The Lord placed you here now because he knew you would have the capacity to negotiate the complexities of the latter part of these latter days. Oh, there that is. There's that phrase. I don't think I don't think I have this one. Um, I have a I have a listing for latter part of these latter days. I don't think I have this there. So this might be, I think, the third one, like the third time that he's said that. I'll check after this video. He knew you would grasp the grandeur of his work and be eager to help bring it to pass. I'm not saying that the days ahead will be easy, but I promise you that the future will be glorious for those who are prepared and who continue to prepare to be instruments in the Lord's hands. My dear sisters, let us not just endure this current season. Let us embrace the future with faith. And that's the name of of that talk. Um, Let's do this one. This is April 2021 General Conference. What we are learning and will never forget. Much has happened in the last two years. Some of you have lost loved ones. Others have lost jobs, livelihood, or health. Still others have lost a sense of peace or hope for the future. My heart goes out to each one of you who has suffered these or other losses. I pray constantly that the Lord will comfort you. As you continue to let God prevail in your life, I know that he is just as optimistic about your future as he has ever been. And then later in the talk, the future is bright for God's covenant-keeping people. The Lord will increasingly call upon his servants who worthily hold the priesthood to bless, comfort, and strengthen mankind and to help prepare the world and its people for the second coming. It behooves each of us to measure up to the sacred sacred ordination we have received. We can do this. Okay. Um, Here's a very important one, especially for, for if, like, you're worried about the cleansing of America. This is President Oaks, first counselor in the first presidency, April 2021 General Conference, defending our, defi- defending our divinely inspired constitution is the name of the talk. 
Our belief in divine inspiration gives Latter-day Saints a unique responsibility to uphold and defend the United States Constitution and principles of constitutionalism wherever we live. We should trust in the Lord and be positive about this nation's future. It's so simple, you guys. It's so simple. Get rid of the fear. Stop scaring other people. And listen to our modern-day prophets and apostles and what they're telling us. <clears throat> and they're not saying that it's going to be easy. It's, they're not saying that there won't be disasters. But what they're not saying is that there's going to be a massive destruction of the United States. Not that it's not possible. They're saying to be positive about the future of the United States. And maybe that's because Christ is going to come, he's going to take the reins, and he'll be king of the whole world, which would include what is now the United States. But whatever the case, between now and when he comes, uh, this is what President Oak says, we should trust in the Lord and be positive about this this nation's future. And that's something that I see a lot of people not doing. Okay, let's cut it off there. Let's go to my quotes, common misconceptions spreadsheet. This is uh, President President Dieter F. Uchtdorf, second counselor in the first presidency, April 2017 general conference. Perfect love, sorry, perfect love casteth out fear. My brothers and sisters, we are charged with studying the word of God and heeding the voice of the spirit that we, that we may know the signs of the times and the signs of the coming of the son of man. We are therefore not ignorant of the challenges of the world, nor are we unaware of the difficulties of our times. But this does not mean that we should burden ourselves or others with constant fear. Rather than dwelling on the immensity of our challenges, we would it not be better to focus on the infinite greatness, goodness, and absolute power of God, trusting him and preparing with joyful heart for the return of Jesus Christ. And then the last thing that I want to share And by the way, I have some other quotes for uh, the future is bright, but I'm not going to read those right now. I don't want this to go too long. Uh, The last one that I have to share is under the topic alarmism. This is by Elder Neely Maxwell of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, for I will lead you along in uh, the April 1988 General Conference. He says, and credit for this goes to Kylon Rick. He's the one that sent this to me. Members of the church need not and should not be alarmists. They need not be deflected from quietly and righteously pursuing their daily lives. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 so, so that there's no misunderstanding, I think that we apps all of us should prepare. We should do as the church counsels try to get to at least three months. And if you can go further, then great. You should have food storage. I think it's ideal if you can uh, to have animals, have chickens, um, ducks. We used to have ducks. It was really fun, but it it was, it was too much. They're messy. Um, Cows, you know, whatever, all all the farm animals, pick your favorite farm animals and get some. Um, I think that's a really good idea. I think it's a good idea if you can, if it if it works for you, if you're inspired to live in a small town or the country where you can do these things. Um, I think it's a good thing. That's what we should do. Um, I don't think that we should fear the future. I think that we should be prepared for it, but be faithful, primarily focus on our spiritual health and our spiritual lives. Make sure that we're living righteously because that's going to, that's going to take you that's going to do the most for your, your safety, both spiritual and temporal. And then in addition to that, do your part to, to prepare temporally. Um, and then as far as this idea of the United States being cleansed, I just, I don't see it yet. I'm aware that there are warnings for America, uh, because it's supposed to be a land reserved for the righteous, (coughs) sorry, for the righteous. And it's gotten worse and worse. So yeah, yeah, maybe it'll happen. But when it does happen, who knows what the extent is going to be? Because some people portray it as though it's just going to be from coast to coast and all of us are doomed. 
and I'm not so sure that that's the case. I haven't seen anything yet, but yes, I will continue to study this. So send me what you have and I'll add it to my spreadsheets. Um, yeah, that's going to be it for this one, though. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.